Hi everyone. Welcome to your English class. I'm Jasmine and this is the 33rd module. Decisions are the hardest thing to make, especially when it is a choice between where you should be and where you want to be. And in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. And the worst thing you can do is nothing. And that's why Dr. Sadao made his choice to save the white man's life. So my dear friends, let's continue with our chapter, The Enemy, written by Paul S. Buck, taken from the book, Wistus. In the previous module, we have seen Dr. Sadao, along with his wife, Hannah, taking the badly wounded white man inside their house and thinking about giving him the necessary medical treatments. They thought they would seek their servant's service for this. Now let's continue reading to know what happened further in the story. As you read this section, you can see Hannah led the way as they walked fast towards the kitchen. The two servants in the kitchen were scared after hearing their master's words regarding the injured white man. The old gardener who also worked as a servant, was pondering over the news and pulling the hair from his upper lip. Further, the old gardener spoke bluntly to Hannah. He said that Sadao must not treat the injured white man. He reasoned that the man was destined to die. Firstly, he had been wounded by a gunshot. And secondly, the rocks of the sea wounded him further. If Sadao healed the wounds given by the gun and the sea, then the gun and the sea would treat them as enemies and seek revenge. Here, the gun represents the Japanese army and the sea represents the country of Japan. So the old gardener was trying to convey that if they treated the enemy, they would be punished by their motherland. Further, you can see, Hana politely said to the gardener that she would pass this message to Sadao. She was frightened, though not superstitious like the old man. She thought that helping an enemy could never be good for them. Still, she asked Yumi to get hot water into the room where the injured man was kept. Further, Hana went inside first and moved the partition to one side. Seda was not there. Yumi followed her and kept the wooden bucket on the floor. As she saw the white man, her thick lips folded and the expression on her face indicated her determination. She said firmly that she had never washed an American man and that she would never wash one who was as dirty as that injured man. Hannah, as her mistress, became so furious about this. She reacted to Yumi's refusal. She screamed at her and that she was supposed to follow her master's orders. But Yumi resisted strongly. Her dull face had a dangerous look of protest which scared Hana. She was worried that if the servants reported something different from what had happened, they could land into trouble. Here you can see, Hana, how tactfully handles the situation and changes her expressions to respect and said, Very well. Further, she explains to Yumi that they intended to bring the unconscious man into his senses and then they would hand him over as a prisoner. But Yumi said that she was not concerned about their plans and she added that she was a poor person and it was none of her business to know about their plans. Thus, Hana realized that she can never convince Yumi so that she asked her to return to her work. Yumi left the room at once. Hana was again left alone with the white man. 
you would have been afraid to remain there all alone. But her anger on Yumi's firm determination made her stay in the room. With great anger towards her servant Yumi, she told to herself, She is a stupid person. And she further said that it was just an injured man. Now let's wait and see what Hana is going to do for the white man, whom she considered as her enemy in the beginning and now as an injured human being who needs help. Thank you.